This is a story from New York, not the New York of Manhattan and the skyscrapers and Broadway, but from perhaps the toughest square mile in the city, in the South Bronx. It's a story from what they call the big house, the busiest firehouse in New York, America, and therefore perhaps the world. It's a story about danger and about frustration, a story of a remarkable group of men who belong to engine number 82, ladder number 31, and battalion 27 of the New York Fire Department. Sometimes parts of New York look more like a B-feature film set than somewhere for people to live. Like the South Bronx, a backdrop to incessant drama for the firemen of Ladder 31 and Engine 82. The fire statistics for New York are staggering. New York has more fires than Chicago, Detroit, Los Angeles and Philadelphia put together. The New York Fire Department responds to nearly a quarter of a million calls a year, three times as many as the London Fire Brigade. And the busiest district is the South Bronx, where last year the men from Battalion 27 responded to more than 10,000 calls. On average, that's one every 45 minutes, night and day, every day of the year. Few would challenge their claim to be the busiest fire station in the world. Most of the fires they fight are in abandoned buildings. Many of them are started deliberately. All are dangerous. Okay, you yeah. want to move back? Let's go over here. Controlling the uh, the kids on the apparatus, and he tells me it's a fireman's job. Now, when you're taking up, when you stop back at the what is it, the 42 precinct, and get that thing straightened out. Battalion 27, second call in 15 minutes to this building, the first to put out a smoldering mattress. The mattress fire whetted somebody's appetite for more fire, and uh, 15 minutes later, we're back here, and the, the building was just almost completely involved with fire. Anybody hurt at all or injured at all? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, five men in Engine 82 are going to uh, go to the hospital just to take a, get a check, you know. But it's kind of exhausting when you, when you do two floors of fire like that, and you're working at, at, at peak capacity, physical capacity. Uh, and it's completely exhausting, you should get checked if you, if you have no more energy. You know. So and now, if you look around, you see all the men are just about depleted of whatever energy they had. And this was just for a fire which presumably started deliberately, was it? Oh yeah, obviously it was, it was, it was an arson, a case of arson. Christ's sakes, this is ridiculous. Uh, you're hey. supposed to be working, but Jesus Christ, this looks like, uh, uh, this is a hell of a, if we, we've uh, gotten anything across to them about safety, this isn't it. Okay. Christ, I mean, this is a more time two guys go off the goddamn ladder. A routine fire in an abandoned tenement with no immediate danger to life or even property. Yet as a result of it, for the next hour and a half, the South Bronx was without effective cover. More than half the men of Engine 82 and Ladder 31 were sent to hospital for checkups, including Fireman Dennis Smith. Uh, the captain and, and Vinnie and I just came back from the hospital. 
uh, we're okay. They kept uh, uh, Benny Cassidy there and, and Jimmy Stark for, for x-rays. They had, uh, you know, kind of an um, inflammation of the chest or something. But we went to the hospital mostly because it's, when you went to heat and smoke like that, it does things to you, uh, to, to my eyes and to lots of people's eyes. And it inflames them to such that when you even blink, you know, it hurts. So you go to the hospital and they, they put a needle in the side and, and drain the whole thing out and put some saline solution. But is there a safe way of fighting a fire like that as compared to fighting a fire when there is a hazard to life? No, I mean, technology hasn't, hasn't, hasn't shown us a safer way of, of fighting a fire except getting closer to it and putting water on it. time for fires is between three in the afternoon and midnight, between the time the children here come out of school and go to bed. On an average night, there may be several fires like this in abandoned or deserted buildings. All take their toll of manpower, and on this night, by ten o'clock, only one of the original crew of six on Engine 82 was still fit to work. I'm an MPO, which means I'm a motor pump operator, and I had to deliver water to the fire. So I'm not permitted to go into the fire building in the event of a fire, my station is to stay with the engine uh, and make sure that they have the water, the proper water. So it could be said it was your lucky night. Well, I like to go into the fires. That's my job and uh, that's what I uh, do the best, put out fires. Forty miles away from the Bronx in upstate New York, another world, the gentler, friendlier world of suburban America. Dennis Smith is a fireman extraordinary. He wrote a best-selling book called, simply, Report from Engine Company 82. Dennis sold the film rights for more than $100,000, even by American standards, a lot of money. <laughs> Dennis and his family, if not rich, wouldn't starve if he stopped risking his life fighting fires. But he hasn't stopped, has hardly even considered the possibility of stopping. Well, because I have a commitment to, to, to them both, to the institution called the fire department, <clears throat> and to firemen, and to being a fireman, and, uh, and in this country, I think it's, it's quite a respectable profession. Uh, it's, it's certainly an interesting one, I mean, uh, and for any kind of creative thinker, there's a wide range of possibilities, future growth, you know, as, as a professional. But what are, the, what are the, the satisfactions you get out of being a fireman? <clears throat> oh, they're all, at the highest level, abstraction, you know, they've got to do with, with a, 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 some kind of a, uh, self-gratification, I guess, a tremendous sense of achievement, um, and uh, a, a kind of an honor about the whole thing. I have heard it compared to bullfighting. Yeah, I guess because bullfighting, after all, comes from the Spanish tradition, and within the Spanish tradition is, this, you know, this the whole concept of machismo and this, the, the need um, to to uh, prove virility and uh, perhaps. Uh, Perhaps in that sense, you know, firefighters also are fulfilling a need. Because the work, as I, as I reflect on it as a journalist now, not as a fireman, uh, it's, I mean, the concept of running into a building everybody else has run out of is insane. And, 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 and you know, for X number of dollars, for a lower middle class income, to do this kind of work and to brutalize bodies the way we necessarily do in the course of our work is also insane. But yet there's, you know, and it goes back to the courage thing. And Joseph Conrad wrote books about it, you know, this need to prove 
to prove that you can do it. And I guess that operates too, among firemen. Have you ever wished that Dennis would give it up, would give up fire funding? I began to wonder if, you know, is it worth it that you would be laid up like that just from wrenching your back, picking up a piece of hose and... And it does get, you know, gets depressing, but uh, he's happy doing it. I mean, I, I'm, I have to resign myself to that. That's, that's the whole thing of it. I, uh, I, can't, I can't make myself miserable about it. I would rather him work in a school, you know, in town and he's qualified to do that now, or to sit home and write books, you know, and be comfortable. But uh, I, that would be ideal for me, but it wouldn't be ideal for him. So Dennis Smith devotes his life to this district of New York, the richest city in the richest country in the world. The South Bronx used to be a respectable Jewish neighborhood, then it was respectable Irish. Now it's a ghetto fast becoming derelict. It hasn't been bombed, it's been devastated by neglect and the people who live here, mostly immigrants from the Deep South or Puerto Rico. There are few parks, no playing fields or even play streets, so they improvise their own amusements, sometimes to the firemen, lethal. What they'll do is they'll cut a hole in the floor, say right by the entrance to the apartment. They'll cut a hole in the floor and they'll cover it over with some like a piece of cardboard or something like that. So when the fireman does go in and he's crawling in, he'll crawl, you know, and they'll go right through the hole. And what they'll do also is, uh, I knew what they were doing, it was they get the piano wire and they were stringing it right across the entrance to a doorway, about neck high. So when the fireman's crawling into the place, he'll crawl in and they'll cut his throat with the piano wire. Uh, another one they were yeah. doing was with bags of gasoline. Gasoline, balloons, balloons, balloons of gasoline. gasoline. They'd have them hanging up, and as the fire would burn, they'd open up the gasoline. As you're going in, the gasoline would open up, and it would light up right in front of you, sometimes right on top of you. Another unbelievable thing that they have here is like when there is a fire in an occupied building, there'll be one floor that the uh, the apartment that is burning, and the floor below it or the floor above it, they'll be one that they'll be taking stuff out. They'll be you know looting places, oh, which is really unbelievable and. Like, we have no way of knowing who, who's the occupant, if it's their, their property that they're taking down or what, you know. So you let them go by, and then, like, ten minutes later, somebody comes up and says, my apartment was robbed. And you say, well, listen, lady, there isn't much we could do about it. You know, it's, uh, we've seen people coming out with television, but we don't know if they own them, you know, and everybody, and uh, even the people themselves have, you know, they've armed themselves with sticks and stuff and gone after these people, you know, that they know that they're, they're looting and stuff like this here, which is really unbelievable. It sounds like they're uh, setting an apartment on fire just for the purpose of uh, looting and robbing. <laughs>